One sunny Wednesday afternoon, in the phosphodiesterase inhibitor city, two drugs named Solosazole and Amrinone, who doesn't know each other yet, had their own errands for the day. In that exact same day, the most awaited movie entitled Cardiovascular System is about to premiere. And from there, people including you is going to witness as to how fate brought their feet closer to each other. What a beautiful day! OMG, the movie I like is finally showing today. I need to get ready. <sighs> I have a long day ahead of me. I have to go to the mall so I can finally take this by TV off my list. Wait, what? Why is the mall so occupied today and what's with everyone's rush to the cinema? Oh, whoa, so this explains all the rush. Ouch! Ouch. Oh, I'm so sorry. Wait, do I know you? Hmm, I think I should be asking you that one because you look so fam- Oh, right! You are the friend of my friends! Ah, yeah, the Minotropin twins! What a small world! Yup! By the way, I'm Silastazole, but my chemical name is 641-cyclohexyl-1H-tetrazole-5-il-biotoxy-3,4-dihydrocarbosteryl. Just don't call me using that name, it's too complicated. I have a chemical name too. It's 5 amino, 3 4 prime, bipyridine, 6 1 H own, and I agree, it's too complicated. For short, you can call me Amrinone. Nice to meet you. You know what? We should hang out sometimes. You can look for me in any pharmacies as Agravan, Clazol, Silisten. Pencil 50 and 100, Plate Sil, Platal, and Vaxol. Oops, I have a lot of brand names. Sorry, how about you? Where can I find you? It's really easy to find me. Simply ask for Amnicor and I'm right at your service. Do you know anyone who is pregnant though? Please warn them to use me only if the benefit justifies the potential risk because I belong under the category C of pregnancy categories. You do? Me too! Wow, we now have something in common. I'll take note of that. Anyway, I am classified therapeutically as an antiplatelet agent and pharmacologically as quinolinon phosphodiesterase inhibitor. That's so interesting! Pharmacologically, I am also a phosphodiesterase inhibitor except I inhibit the type 3 pyridine phosphodiesterase. For my therapeutic action though, we are nothing alike. I am a positive inotropic agent with vasodilatory properties, meaning I strengthen the force of a person's heartbeat. Oh, okay, that's nice. I actually work for patients who have intermittent claudication. Just in case you are wondering, intermittent claudication is pain in the legs that occurs with walking and disappears with rest. The pain occurs due to the reduced blood flow to the legs. How about you? Who do you work for? Thank you, I didn't know that. As for me, I simply work for patients with congestive heart failure. So, you enjoy helping out a lot, huh? Oh, uh, as much as I want to, I am restricted from patients who have heart failure of any severity or patients who are known or suspected to be hypersensitive to any of my components. But the one good thing is that patients with severe underlying heart disease and patients who are taking other drugs that have antiplatelet activity can still use me, but with ultra mega, superb, and extra care. And you? Are you good for all? Well, just like you and all of our other drug friends, I am restricted from patients who are hypersensitive to my components too. The FDA also specifically noted that patients who have a known sensitivity to bisulfites should not infuse me into their system due to my sodium metabisulfite content. That's too unfortunate. We really do have our own struggles. It's really sad when we want to help all patients but some things just don't go our way. Right? 
But cheer up! The movie is about to start. The movie poster looks really good. Let's continue our chit chat later. How about we go to the newly opened coffee shop near the mall? Sure! I heard their Chino tastes good. Let's continue our talk there. So, where were we? Oh, you mentioned earlier that you work for patients who have intermittent claudication. How do you do it? Oh, right! First, I inhibit phosphodiesterase 3. This action increases the amount of cyclic adenosine monophosphate, cyclic AMP for short, in the body cells. As a result, it leads to a reversible inhibition of platelet aggregation, vasodilation, and inhibition of vascular smooth muscle cell proliferation. I am proud to say that I reduce the symptoms of intermittent claudication. Oh, how can I tell you asked? Well, I can tell by the patient's ability to gradually increase his walking distance. How about you? How do you work for patients who have congestive heart failure? Well, I inhibit phosphodiesterase activity first as well. I mean, what do you expect? That's why we live in phosphodiesterase inhibitor city, right? Anyways, like what you said, this action increases the cellular levels of cyclic AMP. But in my case, this occurs in myocardial and vascular muscles. This then stimulates calcium ion influx into the cardiac cell, resulting in a positive inotropic effect. By positive, it means I strengthen the force of the heartbeat, plus I also perform vasodilatory activities, which is why I am very much needed by patients with CHF. Oh, we are equally just as helpful to the human body. It's exceptionally amazing that we're able to do all these in order to relieve certain problems in the human body. Amazing, aren't we? Of course we are, but looking at our physical appearance, I can say that we still have a few things that aren't in common. Wow! Good observation! I come in the form of a tablet because patients receive me orally. I am well absorbed in their GI tract, but it's better if patients take me after a high-fat meal because their body will absorb my components much better. Sadly, my bioavailability is still unknown. But that's something to look forward to in the future. Don't worry, I'll call you right away when it's finally known by researchers. Anyway, I am distributed through protein binding with a percentage of 95 to 98 and I am extensively metabolized by hepatic cytochrome P450 enzymes, mainly 3A4 and to a lesser extent 2C19. Lastly, I say bye-bye to the patient's body via urine with 74% and the remainder as feces with 20%. How about you? I am excited to know what the patient's body does to you. Whoa, that's a lot of info to take in. As for me, I can either be an IV bolus or an IV infusion. My bioavailability is yet to be known too. I am distributed in the patient's body with a volume distribution of 1.2 liters per kilogram. My distributive phase half-life is 4.6 minutes in plasma. I am 10 to 49% bound to plasma proteins, however, my exact distribution sites are unknown. I am metabolized in the liver. My metabolite activity is by glucuronidation and acetylation. Now that explains why we look the way we look. Science is so overwhelming but incredibly fascinating at the same time. But, um, there's something I want to tell you. Please believe me when I say that I am a good drug, because I really am. There are just things that even I, myself, cannot control. Let's just say that I give patients side and adverse effects, but they are all unintentional. Hmm, how do I say this? Alright, for their central nervous system, I give headache and dizziness. For their cardiovascular system, I give angina pectoris and ventricular extracystals. For their gastrointestinal, I give diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and abnormal feces. For their respiratory system, I give rhinitis and pharyngitis. For their skin, I give ecchymosis and rash. For general disorders and admin site, 
I give asthenia. For their metabolism and nutrition, I give edema and anorexia. My significant effects are tachycardia, palpitation, tachyarrhythmia, hypotension, and a granulocytosis. And lastly, oh my gosh, this makes me sad. I actually give effects that are potentially fatal, such as pancytopenia and plastic anemia. Oops, I'm very talkative. Sorry. I hope you're not annoyed though. Gosh, that's a lot of adverse effects. Let's be real though, there are times when we may worsen the patient's condition, but I agree with you. Those side effects are unintentional and definitely out of our control. I admit, I cause adverse effects to my patients as well, the most common being thrombocytopenia, which affects their hematological system. In their cardiovascular system, I may cause arrhythmia or hypotension. In their GI tract, I may cause nausea, vomiting, or abdominal pain. In their hepatic system, I may cause an increase in the amount of their bilirubin, causing jaundice and hepatoxicity as well. For their endocrine system, I may cause nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. As for general side effects, I may cause fever, chest pain, and burning at the site of injection. For hypersensitivity reactions, I may cause pericarditis, pleuritis, ascites, myositis, and or vasculitis. Thank you for opening this up to me. I'm glad we were able to talk about both our good and bad sides. No problem, and... Oh no, I almost forgot! I need to buy the TV my mom instructed me to buy. Would you like to come with or let's depart for now? Hmm, I'm not actually busy. And besides, it's still early. I'll keep you company. Sure. Hmm, I don't know exactly what my mom wants. Your family trusts you with major tasks like this, huh? You have quite a load of responsibilities. Uh, yeah, because, you know, adulting. Oh, by the way, speaking of responsibilities, all we talked about was ourselves and our patient. We haven't talked about the nurse who administers us. Before administering me to the patient, I noticed that the nurse first deludes me with a recommended amount of normal saline. However, for my IV bolus form, I may be administered diluted or undiluted. Anyways, she always makes sure that my end solution is a clear yellow without precipitate. I also notice that the nurse warns her patient that a burning sensation may occur at the injection site and she advises the patient to report adverse effects reactions right away. During administration, the nurse makes sure that my diluted self must be used up in 24 hours. She also monitors the infusion site to prevent extravasation. The nurse keeps checking in too to monitor the patient's blood pressure, heart rate, and respiration rate. I bet this is because the clinical response and adverse effects determine the rate of administration and duration of my therapy. After, the nurse checks for an increased cardiac output and relieves symptoms of CHF in her patients. These are indications of my therapeutic effects. She also monitors the patient's platelet count to determine if the patient is at risk for thrombocytopenia. The nurse also observes the patient for adverse effect in his GI tract and note for any signs of allergic reactions. The nurse does this so that she would know if she has to discontinue my use or not. Really? Gosh! I didn't know nurses had a lot of responsibilities. Your nurse and my nurse handle us so differently. Before administering me, nurses need to assess patients for signs and symptoms of congestive heart failure. They should not give me to patients with signs of congestive heart failure. They also need to warn female patients that breastfeeding isn't allowed while taking me. They have to instruct patients to report side effects promptly. And they need to make sure I was stored at 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. During administration, I have to be taken orally with 100 milligrams twice a day and 30 minutes before or two hours after meals. Nurses should not give me along with a grapefruit. That's a no-no. 
grapefruit juice can increase my amount in the blood, therefore increasing the possibility of adverse effects. I don't want that to happen either. Finally, after administering me, nurses should implement therapeutic exercises to hasten the effects of drug therapy. They should encourage patients to gradually increase walking distance and walking time, and practice caution during exercises to reduce the risk of tachycardia and other arrhythmias. Nurses should check the patient's blood pressure, heart rate, and fatigue levels regularly to assess their exercise tolerance. Lastly, they should monitor my therapeutic effectiveness and that includes the patient's ability to walk without leg pain. They really are skillful individuals. I'm really happy because nurses exist. True, they handle us to help minimize errors. And they deserve all the love in the world. Yes! Oh, the sun is about to set. I think I should go. Wait, let's go together. I'll just pay for the TV. Sure. And from that day onwards, Solosazole and Ambrinone became best friends. During weekends, they would hang out in the park, in the mall, in the library, and even go to church together during Sundays. And that is how they met. Two movie tickets for a lifetime friendship.